play goes on towards the half forward line the dogs doing it well through mcgrath again i think you'll find that's going to be an fad and it's going to trevor oh is it going back to mcgrath uh, it's going back to buckley uh, i thought mcgrath actually but buckley it's going to be buckley peter all right it was paid fad buckley now at uh, center half back for the dogs difference is 10 points 17 minutes into the quarter henwood the back shows superior judgment Bays needs to get a move on now. Goals at a premium here in the last quarter. Henwood around one, but that's a terrible kick. Back to McGrath. He fumbles in trouble. Throws it on the ground, gets a high tackle, says Laurie Argent. So he's got it at centre half back. The dogs are hanging on. And there it is in replay, and uh, no doubt the infringement was there. McGrath goes short, looking for Rowe. Possession football from the dogs seen that time has ticked on to about 17 minutes and just four minutes plus time on to be played. Henwood, good mark. A high kick. In front, is it going to be played at the second attempt? It is. Jamie Thomas had an interesting duel back there. Michael Murphy playing at centre forward at the moment. He's found it difficult to break clear. Thomas will boot it back towards centre wing. A big nest of Bay players. Cruz unattended. Here's a chance. Gibbs loose. Gibbs goes him short. Looking for Garten. Can't handle it. Kick off the ground by Lee. Marshall after it. But coming out with it is Peter Winder. He tears off, kicks it over the centre of the ground. Fraser's has got the ball. Gets boot to ball eventually. Now it's by theme. Running to the boundary line, Seabom over the top of him. The handball comes back, great work. Little runs into the open goal and misses. Oh. Well, a goal there would have sewn it up for the Dogs, but they couldn't convert. 6-7 now, leading the Tigers 4-8. Bythene's played well, so has McGrath and Jamie Thomas. The Dogs have got a few good players, and they're hanging in there. They lead by 11 points now. Big leap, McGrath. Gee, he just took a thumping a little while ago at centre-half. Back came up Gimpy, but that mark certainly belied the injury. McGrath at centre half forward. Coffey gives a tentative lead, but aborts. He's going in longer, up towards the lead now of Bythine. Uses his body well, gets underneath the ball. He's got it. Fine mark, Peter Bythine. Corns looks worried, cannot believe it. A strong mark, body to body with Seaboam all the way, and Bythine's got it 30 metres out on a slight angle. Well, I agree with Peter Marker. A goal here could seal it for the Dogs. Towards the golf course end. Bythine on the way. The kick is not going to come back with a boot. And the Tiger supporters breathe a sigh of relief again. 6-8 plays 4-8. The Dogs in front. 12 points the difference. Two clear goals. So they'll need more than two kicks now to win this. There won't be a lot of time on, Peter. I reckon that there's 20 minutes gone. I mean, uh, David, I reckon there's only going to be another two minutes of play. Yes, we're 20 minutes plus gone and uh, 21 mi one minute quarters. Grenvold went high. In goes Brendan Little. He could have sewn the game up a few moments ago when he had that shot for goal, but he missed. So umpire Craze to bounce. Just at centre half forward for the Dogs. Corns is worried. Well, they'll get in trouble. Having won their previous two Escort Cup matches and looked a certainty before this game started. But it's been a courageous effort by the Dogs. Yes, it has been a while since uh, the Nog have lost a, a game of footy. And it's uh, most unaccustomed for them. But it was the end of the minor round, in fact, last year when they lost their last game. A staring defeat in the face at the moment. Although Kidney has it running through centre-half forward. Is this the attacking move they're looking for? It's into the square. Oh, Woodland's at the back. Has a second chance. Pops a goal. He's got it. No doubt about that. One goal the difference. The first of Woodland's. Oh, what a goal. I'm a rocker. Well, that was the only goal scored so far in this quarter. And what a ripper it was to Craig Woodlands. The little opportunist. Uh, when he gets a sniff around goals, he really misses. 6-8, plays 5-8. The dog's in front. Can they hang on? Can the Bays get back? As I mentioned before, there's a lot uh, riding on this Escort Cup. Plenty of money involved. 
They go forward again through Kidney, and he's been involved in both of their forward thrusts. And uh, Gibbs couldn't quite keep it in then. Started off in the back pocket. May have gone to centre for a while, but he's certainly up forward now. In ruck will be Adam Garton. McGrath, possibly the dog's best player. He's going to get a free kick. The umpire doesn't like what Garton did. He's bringing him back 15 metres. It must have been fairly serious for that sort of reaction from the up. The siren's gone. The dogs have come from the grave of the last two weeks to win this one with a very good second half of football, and it's still on out there. They've been at it all evening, these two sides. Robin Kidney dragged someone from the uh, from the mess. When will this game end, Ian? The, the siren's gone, but they want to keep playing. Which game are we talking about, Peter? Well, it's been on all night. There's been a lot of bad feeling out there. But in a game where you've got a lot of, uh, lot of scragging and scruffing, and you've got two teams hell-bent on seeming to physically destroy the other one, you're going to get this sort of thing happening. And uh, the Dogs went out there with a plan to unsettle the Bays. They were without their playmakers, but full marks to Cowboy Neil and the Dogs. They stuck to their plan, and they've come out victors. Yes, the final scoreline. The Dogs 6-8 to Glenelg 5-8. And uh, who would have thought at half-time the Dogs would have got back into it because... Uh, in at the halftime break, they, they were 2 3, trailing Glenelg 4 3. Remember, Glenelg got one right on the bell. That 12 point lead, with Glenelg kicking with the breeze in the third quarter, um, you would have imagined at that stage that Glenelg would have been clear cut favourites. Yes, Peter, I thought at three quarter time that their superior skill would have won out on the night, but I don't know that they did have superior skill when it was all boiled down at the end. But when you have a look at it, it was a battle of defences. The, the Dogs had some superb players, Harlan defence with McGrath. And, uh, and the Bays did the same. And, and apart from Braddy in the first half, I can't think, and copying to a lesser extent for the, the Bays, I can't think of one forward that won his position for the night. No, I'd agree with that. And of course, uh, worse was to come for the Dogs when Braddy had to go off with an injury. Later in the evening, Coffey was taken out of full forward and he was put uh, in, into defence. And then we found Bythine uh, started to rest at full forward with Andrew Mould. So it was a complete shake-up in the Central District lineup, and a uh, pretty good effort from, for them to come up notwithstanding that imbalance that was caused. I agree, Peter. I'd also like to highlight the effort of Bythine. He was the instigator of a lot of the rough stuff, and I think he caused the Bays to drop concentration a fair bit. But whilst he was doing all that, he played a strong game himself. Yeah. And he had a chance to kick that goal in the end, which uh, eventually wasn't necessary at all. But I'd give full marks to Peter Bythine. Who, I think he's got something to prove out there in the dog land, and, and tonight I think he started doing just that. Yes, I, I'd agree with that. Uh, of course, they're missing a few players, uh, and the same for the Bays. The Bays left out five, I think. They've got a game on Tuesday night um, against the Bulldogs from Melbourne. They left out five, but uh, the Bulldogs here also have got a couple out, Cousins and Bubner, just to mention a few. Well, that's it. A great victory to the Dogs. Uh, the coach is pretty happy. They're singing their uh, victory song. Central District 6-8, beat Glenelg 5-8. We'll take a break, and then we'll be back with more soon thereafter. Yes, Kevin, they were certainly very pleased. Things certainly changed tonight, Kevin. Yes, it was a lot better effort. I, you know, we've been trying pretty hard, but we've just been playing as individuals and we haven't really had a, a solid team effort. And, uh, you know, I tried, we worked on that and the players were pretty honest with themselves this week and we thought if we could work as a unit and just keep busting our guts, well, you know, we might be able to win one. And uh, you know, they did just that tonight. They really never give up working hard in twos and threes and fours, which... No, it was, was really good. At half time, Peter and I sort of made mention that Centrals had worked hard in the first half but hadn't done anything with the ball. Then young Walters did a good job during that third quarter for you with a couple of wonderful kicks. Yes, well, you know, that's apart from the other skills Mick's got, that's one of the, the pluses to play him in a half forward flank because, or somewhere around the forward line because he can kick goals when he gets it. Yeah, he's a beautiful disposer of the ball and, uh, you know, he kicked, uh, kicked two and then, then set another one up. And, uh, you know, that's, we just lacked a bit of penetration up forward early. We worked very hard, as you said, and didn't get any great results from it. But, uh, you know, while doing that, at least in the second quarter against the wind, Glenelg didn't get too far away from us. Do you think you're getting anywhere at Central? Do you think the club really is responding um, to your coaching at the moment? You're feeling confident in yourself now. You're really starting to get the feel of Central Districts after a couple of seasons or so. And you must be starting to feel as though you feel the ups and downs of Centrals. They've had a few over the years, Kevin. Oh yes, you know, we, we just sort of, we've had to sort of keep changing the blokes and, and until we get the fellas with the right attitude and we probably expected a little bit too much too early this year. We thought, you know, we had problem spots last year, we recruited the blokes we wanted and we thought it was just a matter of dropping them in and we'd, uh, we'd click, but it, it doesn't work that way and our first two games were, were disappointing uh, that we didn't win them, 
but uh, you know, and this is we've just sort of only turned the corner. We've got a long way to go yet, but you know, they showed that they, they can do it if they really want it, want it hard enough. It's good to see Andrew Moulds back here. A couple of seasons ago, when you first came, he looked as though he was going to do the, be the goods, didn't he? Yes. Well, both him and Peter Bythland and I are a bit short in height against uh, against Kerry and Henwood, and uh, I thought they both did a superb job. They just kept at the body all night and uh, and didn't give them a chance to, to dominate. Well, I'm sure Central Districts, when they get a little bit more go, with a bit more touch in that ball, their effort tonight was fantastic. Good on you, Kevin. Well done. Maybe another few weeks we'll see the Bulldogs right in there. I hope so. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Graham, uh, it's one of those games, isn't it, really? No, oh, just one of those hard slogging games, and uh, they outslogged us in the end. Did you expect that sort of football? Oh, yeah. We'd, you, particularly in view of uh, Central Districts' last couple of weeks, you knew that they were going to be out scragging and, and, and head hunting and uh, trying to slow the game down and they they did it very well. I didn't think our guys get our guys didn't get sucked in but they they just sort of kept at it and kept at it and in the end uh, we didn't use the ball well enough and they were a bit more determined and a bit more desperate than we were in the end and that's when it mattered. Claudia, because you're the tall poppy, is that sort of thing going to happen to you regularly throughout the season? Oh, do you expect that to happen to you? Well you do. I mean you well, who knows who's the tall poppy? Uh, well, you were for the last year, aren't you? We're the reigning premier, so obviously a uh, team playing against you is going to lift, lift their performance. So you've got to expect, you've got to expect it. Yeah. Umpiring performance tonight. How did you see that? Mm. Well, I was most impressed with the um, with the new chap. I thought David Crows. Yeah, his, I thought his performance was was really good. I, I, and I was just as equally disappointed and even disgusted with Laurie Argent. What, what I, aspects of his umpiring didn't you? Well, his, his interpretation, this new interpretation of holding the ball, I mean, Robin Kidney would be wondering what on earth he's got to do to get a free kick or to stop giving away a free kick. I mean, every time he touched the ball, a player laid his hand on it, bang, free kick, and I was most disappointed, well, Graham, to say the least, with Laurie Argent. The other lad, I thought, was terrific. Do you think we're putting too much onus on the umpires that... that to ask them to interpret the this yeah well I, I I I think we do you know holding the ball holding the man is always open to um, controversy and uh, it is a difficult rule to interpret but uh, the guy who's playing the ball and has made the effort to play the ball and gets the ball first surely should be given an opportunity to get rid of it and uh, you know I, I thought Laurie's interpretation of that and and then a couple of other decisions of his were. You know, just absolutely. For, for an experienced umpire, I mean, footballers and coaches have to cop the criticism. I don't think, I don't see why umpires shouldn't, and it's always, a, it's always risky to do it because you have repercussions next time you're playing them. But, you know, I, I'm saying that the, the new lad was as, as good an umpiring performance as I've seen. The other one was just as equally as poor. Not a good performance from the base. I know. Oh, uh, I know. Well, I'm not, I'm not detracting from the no. performance of Central Districts. So I'm not saying that there's a difference between winning or losing. But, uh, yeah, obviously we're disappointed we didn't win. But, you know, we tried a few new players and tried a few new positions and we didn't win and uh, we're disappointed we didn't win and we want to make amends for that. Thanks for joining us, Graham Collins. I know you, Peter. Well, I, I guess we've got to stick together, but uh, I, I think it's good, David, to see um, someone like Graham Corns in his position uh, with some upfront honesty there about his views of the umpiring because, as he said, uh, if the umpire took that the wrong way, uh, perhaps the next time that they, uh, that they met, things mightn't go Glenelg's way, but Graham Corns with some honesty there, and I think that's good to see, rightly or wrongly. And Graham will have his next chance, of course, on Tuesday night. Foster's Cup, 9.30, 7 Sport, watch it, Glenelg against... Uh